I never can get used to that. Hey everybody, Whitney Labrie here, and this week we're gonna be moving forward with our 15 room dollhouse renovation. And today we're still working on the what we do in the shadows vampire dining room. I have plenty planned today. First, we're gonna start with biscotti. So this is my favorite trick. We present our guest with a plate of biscotti. Biscotti is actually from the What We Do in the Shadows movie and not the show. Not a lot of food happening in a vampire house, so I thought that was really funny, so we definitely had to add it. So the way I'm gonna do this is I'm just going to start with a can of food that I already had. This was a can that I came in a, a general store food lot that I had. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my black Sharpie and color the top of it just so it will kind of look as though it's already opened, like an open can of biscotti. Then I took a little piece of cardboard stock stenciled out a round circle and then that's gonna be my lid I want to make it look like the can is kind of open and propped open a little bit I cut that out kind of gave it a little bit of some jagged edges and I colored it gray with my gray sharpie I also printed up some Campbell's soup labels I didn't realize I was gonna find this when I got on the internet but they actually have some pop art that is like a Campbell's can of biscotti so I went ahead and printed that up and then I took my cardstock lid and I just took this piece of wood and kind of rolled it back because I want it to look like a can top being peeled back and then I went ahead and glued it to the top of my can. Next, I'm taking some silver paint and also this color called tomato because I think that that is fitting. And I want to go ahead and paint a little bit of tomato sauce kind of dripping down my can. And I'm gonna also cover up a bit of a crease. So I wanna use that to cover that up. And I'm gonna put a little bit underneath the can lid, you know, trying to make it look a little bit realistic. And then once I have all my tomato paint in place, I'm just gonna go ahead and grab my silver paint and then paint that lid. And then we've got our can of bis Biscotti. Biscotti is what the vampires use as like a gag gift on their human guests. They make them a plate of this canned spaghetti and then they make them think it's actually worms. And the funny thing is, is that isn't even their original idea. They actually stole that from the movie The Lost Boys. And that's what's so hilarious about the movie and also the show is that these vampires aren't even good at being vampires. So to make the biscotti or spaghetti, the first thing we're going to do here is going to make the pasta noodles. So I'm just going to roll out my polymer clay and make it as thin as possible. And then just when you think that it's thin enough, make it even thinner. And I'll show you why later. So here you can see all my little noodles. I have rolled them out very, very thin, but honestly, I really could have made these a lot thinner. I'm gonna take my tweezers and also a toothpick and I'm gonna start kind of curling up these little pasta noodles and placing them on my plate here. The plate that I'm using today is actually an old button. <laughs> so I'm just gonna place the noodles on the tray. I want them to look like canned spaghetti and I'm not actually going for a real fancy look here. I want them to look like they just got dumped out of a can. So I'm gonna pop them on the plate and go ahead and set them to the side. So I'm gonna plate, make two plates of the biscotti, but I also wanna make a regular plate of spaghetti with some meatballs also. So if you're interested in doing something, obviously besides just spaghetti noodles. So I'm gonna try to be a little bit fancier with how I put the noodles on the plate for the spaghetti and meatballs. So basically I've taken a couple different colors of brown polymer clay, a dark and a light, and then mix in a little translucent, and then I'm gonna use that to make three little meatballs. Now to give the meatballs a little texture, I'm just gonna take my toothbrush and kind of pat them a little bit to kind of give them the look of rolled meat. And then I'm gonna go ahead and set those aside for now. Now to make the sauce, this is a really bright orange sauce, especially like a canned sauce. I'm gonna take my clear liquid Sculpey, a little bit of this bright orange, a little bit of this red. I'm gonna mix that together. And then I'm gonna add those two colors back and forth until I get the consistency that I want, the color that I want. And it felt like it was a little too bright, so then I added this color here, and then that felt right. So I'm gonna go ahead and start adding that to the plates. Now for my spaghetti and meatball plate, I did add the spaghetti sauce first, then I added my meatballs, and then I added a little bit more spaghetti to the top. For the biscotti, it's just noodles and sauce, and so that's really easy. I'm just adding a whole bunch of sauce. I really do want it to kind of have a soupy sauce kind of feel on the plate, so I'm making sure to put a little extra on that. All right, and then that's what they look like, and I'm gonna go ahead and bake them. 
All right, once they're baked, really the biscotti is done, but the spaghetti and meatballs needs a little extra. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of my green polymer clay and create two little basil leaves here using my toothpick. I'm gonna pop those on top of my meatballs and then I'll go ahead and bake those for just a little while longer. Then once everything is nice and cooled down, I'll take my glazing medium here and I'm gonna paint them to kind of give them more of that wet food look. And they're gonna be pretty much done except for the spaghetti and meatballs. I feel like I needed maybe a little bit of a grated Parmesan cheese look. So I am gonna take a little bit of my white pastel here, my white chalk, and just scrape off just a little bit and then that one will be completed. My spaghetti noodles are a little too thick, so again, make sure you really make those pasta noodles as thin as possible. Now I want to work on the Nandor-esque coffin. And the reason I say esque is because, well, the coffin I have is not quite the shape of Nandor's actual coffin. His is more of a rectangle, and of course I have more of a traditional looking coffin here. So I bought this fur at the hobby store, this faux fur, and I bought this piece of felt here in this really pretty burgundy color, and I'm gonna use those to line the interior of this coffin, which also has this cool fold-down see-through window here, so you can, you know, see the deceased. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this fur right here is so soft and it comes in like this really long strip. So what I'm going to do is just take my Sharpie here and turn the, the fur on the onto the other side because on the other side it's more like a can, it feels like canvas. And I'm gonna stencil out the shape of the coffin and make my first cuts. Now I'm using fabric scissors for this because I needed them to be very sharp and go right through this fabric canvas. Now that already looks really comfortable to me, but one of the things for sure that's going to need to happen is this fur is gonna need a little bit of a haircut because it's really long. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the sides. I'm going to go ahead and cut out this fur to create a nice comfortable fur lined siding as well in this coffin. Now, since this coffin lid doesn't fold open, I have to keep putting it on top of the lid and make sure that I'm making sure that before I glue everything down that I leave little areas in all four corners so that it can still close once the fur is installed. And then to glue everything in, I'm just gonna be using my tacky glue here. And you can see I'm having to do a little bit more trimming. <laughs> I mean, we need comfort, but you know, you don't wanna be getting tickled all night by the fur you know, while you're trying to sleep, that would be, that would be super distracting. I, I'd keep waking up. All right, and then that's what the interior will look like. Nice and comfortable. All right, and then in this picture here, you see Nandor sitting in his coffin and you see behind him those three pieces of, it's probably like batting and like a pillow top almost. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and fur line the top part of the coffin lid and then I'm going to use I'm just cutting this piece of this is like what the fur came on to make some stencils so I'm just kind of using it like a cardstock to you to make some triangle stencils so I know kind of how big I want to make those felt pieces once I have my stencils made I'm going to go ahead and cut down the I'm going to cut down the felt and then I do have some gold ribbon here that I'm going to place in the middle of the felt pieces to kind of give that same look that we saw on Nandor's coffin. So I'll go ahead and glue that also. I of course don't want to do the top because I want to be able to see inside the coffin. <laughs> all right, and so once, all, once that is all done, I want to stain the outside of the coffin to be a little bit darker like the one that we're seeing in the show. I'm just gonna take my dark stain pen here and start going over the outside of this box. Now this box has a little stain on it already and so I'm not really sure how this is gonna look, but in the end it did okay because it actually gave it even more of a wood grain look, which is I think better than what it was. And then for the top, I'm going to install these little embellishment pieces here that I have just to kind of give it the similar look that you see in Nandor's coffin. Obviously it's not the exact same. And then I'm staining those also and then I'm gonna add a little bit of gold 
hold to them too. Then what I did was I just printed up a picture of Nandor and just basically his head and shoulders. So that way when I open the top coffin, the top window, I can see him inside. Hey man, that is not Nandor. Tiny Winnie, what are you doing in there, you little rascal? <laughs> Get out of there. We're trying, we're here to see Nandor, not Tiny Whitney. All right, we'll try that again. All right, and there's Nandor. And I kind of try to choose a picture of him making an expression as though he's slightly irritated at us for interrupting him during his slumber. Adding taxidermy to this room really seemed natural just because of the style theme being Victorian slash Gothic, it felt like maybe some old taxidermy would be in this room. But really the show does highlight taxidermy where the vampire couple Laszlo and Nausea, they have a ton of it in their bedroom. So it just felt natural in that way too, to incorporate it in this room. So what I did here was I took some a piece of, a small piece of wood here, which equaled out to be about six inches by two inches. And I divided it into three sections. Then I got some pretty coarse sandpaper and I sanded all the edges really well. I wanted them to have more of a rounder edge to them. I want these to be what the taxidermy heads will be mounted on. Then I got my stain pen of course and I stained them all in this walnut finish. Then I grabbed my sandpaper again and I rounded out the edges, kind of getting rid of some of that stain and here's what they look like. So they have a little bit of a distress feel. Then I found this sheet of aluminum in this gold color and I just literally cut off the smallest sliver on the very base because I want these to be like the name plates for these taxidermy heads. And then I super glued them to the base, as you can see there. Once they were all dried, I took my very fine Sharpie marker and I put two dots on either side so it looked like there was two nails holding them in. And then I just wrote dates and I just picked out some random old dates. All right, now for the taxidermy. <laughs> so in the show, there's a lot of highlight on several different types of animals. I looked for them, but I couldn't find them. I really wanted to find a goat, but I couldn't find one. So I'm gonna still look for that. But in the meantime, I found these guys all at the flea market for just a couple bucks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chop off their heads. <laughs> I'm only gonna do three and honestly I put these bad boys in a vise in the garage and I got this saw and I'm not gonna lie this does not feel right at all <laughs> I mean it's so wrong that I'm gonna have to discuss this in therapy for sure and exactly what is your earliest memory of not feeling normal <coughs> All right, so the three animals that I actually chose to make into taxidermy pieces was the elephant because it just seemed so grand. And then I chose the rhinoceros because it seemed so fierce. I was gonna go with the lion, but the head itself wind up being just too big for the little pieces that I made and it just wasn't gonna sit right so I didn't do the lion. And then for fun, because this is a comedy, let's face it, I did chop off the hippopotamus butt. So we'll have one butt on the wall. <laughs> The next thing that I did was I took this really coarse sandpaper and I just sanded off the bottoms to kind of give them, well, I didn't sand off the bottoms. I sanded the underneath part to get rid of some of that plastic and make them flatter, as flat as I could and even as I could. And then I took my X-Acto knife and I just kind of went around the edges and to clean up the edges. All right, now as far as gluing them to the bases, I use a combination of super glue and I also use hot glue uh, to fill in some gaps. Like you can see here underneath some of the gaps, like the rhinoceros looks pretty good. The, the rhino, the hippopotamus butt looks pretty good, but the elephant has a kind of a gap. So I wanted to fill in that gap with the glue. You can see there so I can paint over it. And then what I did was I just took some of my acrylic paint and I went over them to make them look a little bit realistic, a little bit more realistic. Did some highlights some low lights. I got rid of the white dots in the eyes because elephants don't have those white dots. Added some brown to the tusks and things like that. And you can see here they're looking a little bit more realistic. Same with the rhinoceros. It made him look a little bit more realistic. Added some highlights and low lights. Filled in the eyes. And then with the hippopotamus booty, I just add a little brown and didn't do much there. It was just too hilarious, so. <laughs> All right, and then those are my taxidermy pieces. So now it's time to put everything together.
Now this coffin right here is special. This is actually by JBM. It has all of the great detail that you would want in a coffin and I actually have a couple of these in my eBay store right now. So if you're interested, the link is in the description. sad now because now it's the end of the video but I am happy because if you haven't already subscribed go ahead and push that button for me give me a thumbs up that's incredibly important and as always I love hearing from you so let me know what you think of the video in the comments below well hey tiny Whitney what do you think of our buschetti no not a fan huh you don't even want to try like a little piece are you sure all right, next time, I'll let you off the hook. Thank you so much, everybody, for being here. Thank you so much for all your support. It is super appreciated. Have a great week, you guys, and I will see you next time. Bye.